Today is Monday, July 30th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Monday Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Today's guests are Steve Freed, Vice President of Grain Research at ADMIS, and Alan Bush, ADM Investor Services Senior Financial Economist. Steve, let's start with the grains this morning. Grain prices keep trading higher. Why is this? I think it's a couple of things. I think that uh, the weather uh, in the U.S. Is, hasn't been really the best over the last, uh, let's say, week or two. And then the forecast is warm and dry and for the next two weeks. So I think there are some funds that are covering shorts. Uh, over in the wheat, uh, lower crops in um, some areas is, is helping. Uh, actually, the funds go long wheat. What, what, what else are the funds doing? I mean, the long wheat market, what are they doing in corn and soybeans right now? Um, last week they actually added to their short position in corn and today we think they're getting kind of out of those positions. Um, you know, that there's just a lot of uncertainty as what kind of uh, corn yield we're going to have and, and the impact that's going to have on the carryout. But a lot of people think the corn market has made a bottom and it could work higher depending upon the final yield. And but, um, as far as the beans are concerned, uh, we've, we've got some demand showing up in the beans that uh, is helping the market and I think that Again, um, the market is, uh, funds are short, and I think they're covering the shorts. Back to the wheat, Steve. Uh, you mentioned that wheat prices mm -hmm. seem to be pushing higher, um, and they're, they're outperforming corn and soybeans. Why is this? I think that, uh, first of all, uh, there's talk about a lower European crop, uh, maybe 15 million tons below the USDA's uh, quoted number last July. Uh, the Russian crop is also lower, and so we're hoping that that'll bring demand here. and so. Um, it's the first market to trade over some of the key moving averages which triggered fund short covering and now they're buying the market and I think that some people think that if we do see export demand, prices could actually go higher in wheat and, and need to buy maybe more acres in 2019. Steve, can we talk a minute about President Trump's, Trump's uh, aid package? What is the latest on the $12 billion aid to U.S. farmers? Well, this morning, the Secretary of Agriculture said that they would start sending checks out to farmers either the last week in September or the first week in October, and it would total about $8 billion of the $12 billion. So we think that, uh, first of all, uh, farmers might uh, use this money to pay bills, they might use, and it could suggest that they will store, especially their corn market, rather than sell it at harvest. And most analysts are telling them, you know, this is for the beans, it's for the fact that we're China may not buy beans from U.S. in 18 and 19, and they should use this uh, to pay bills, too. When is the next, next USDA uh -huh. report? August 10th. Uh, I think it will be a really important report for two reasons. Number one, you've got a pretty widespread analyst guess of what corn and wheat carryout might be, depending upon yield. Uh, last week, the spring wheat tour up in North Dakota found yields lower than expected. Uh, based on the crop ratings, and they're really disappointed that crop ratings were so high relative to the actual yields. And some people think in corn, at least, that um, the corn yield may also be a little bit lower than what the ratings suggest because of the um, late planting, warm temperatures at night, and the quick maturity of the crop. And then if we go two or three weeks without a rain in the Midwest, um, a good general soaking rain, it might bring soybean yields down from what the USDA is saying. So. If, if it's disappointing, it could trigger uh, more buying in corn and beans. And so it's going to be a very volatile report. Let's flip over to the financials once, Alan. On Friday, it was reported that the U.S. second quarter of GDP increased by an annual rate of 4.1%. Right. What is the outlook for GDP the rest of the year? Well, it appears that we may not keep that pace at uh, over 4%, but, but it does uh, seem, according to some of the numbers that I'm looking at and some of the predict predictions that we have seen, that GDP will be between 3 and 3.5% 3 for the rest of this year. So also I find it interesting that while U.S. GDP is increasing, especially with this 4.1% print, that the uh, Chinese GDP is actually dropping uh, slightly from 6.8% to 6.7%. So not sure if that has any ramifications for what's happening with the uh, global trade situation overall, but in any event, U.S. GDP is likely to be over 3% for the next two quarters of this year. Alan, back to the trade tariff situation uh, between the U.S. and China, I mean, wouldn't that be a, have a negative impact normally on GDP? 
It would, uh, except it seems that other factors are, are having more of an impact, such as the tax cuts and the low interest rates. So these markets seem to be looking past the global trade worries and looking at something more positive. And in, in, in any event, there's something good going on that is supporting the, this uh, U.S. economy. Interest rates, Alan, the 30-year Treasury bond futures fell to a new two-month low today. What is the outlook for the interest rate futures market right now? Well, it still looks lower uh, as the Fed is likely to raise rates in September and possibly another time in December. And as the U.S. economy remains uh, relatively strong, that would mean higher interest rates, of course, and higher interest rates means lower prices. And it looks like most of the pressure is likely to be concentrated at the long end of the curve, the 30-year bonds. So any rallies should be used as selling opportunities at the long end of the curve. So stock index futures remained firm. Uh, why are the U.S. stock futures holding up well in spite of the ongoing global trade uncertainties? Well, history has shown that when there are trade wars, that stock index markets or stock index futures do not fare well. But that seems to be not the case this time as much. In fact, it was uh, not that long ago, several weeks ago, that we did see some uh, new record highs in the uh, NASDAQ and also in the Russell 2000. So it appears that traders are looking past the negatives of these trade problems, looking again probably at their still relatively low global interest rate environment. Don't forget now we have the Fed funds rate at uh, between uh, one and three quarters and two percent, which is of course a very low historical rate. But in the 80s, we had the Fed funds rate somewhere in the 10 percent range. So by historical standards, interest rates are very low. That remains very supportive to the economy and of course then to stock index futures. Thank you both. Remember the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.